Hi, and welcome to my sci-fi, fantasy, and horror short fiction roundup for July 2021. And I think I have 24 stories for this roundup, so I'm just going to dive right in because there's a lot of really great stories to get to. My first story pick this month is The Child Feast of Herodon Sack by Caitlin Zivanovich in Pseudopod, and it's narrated <clears throat> by Jasmine Blake. This is possibly, truly, one of the most harrowing, powerfully real, and terrifying horror stories I've read and or listened to recently. Zivanovich expertly weaves together fairy tale and reality, the terrible truths and struggles of parenthood, and the inescapable horror of real human beings doing terrible things. A mother comes home and finds her 12-year-old daughter gone, the daughter she loves, the daughter who she has fought with as adolescence and puberty comes a-calling, the daughter who is nowhere to be found and who won't answer the mother's texts or calls. Now in a fairy tale there are things a mother must do in order to save her child. In the real world there are also things that must be done, but the endings are not always happily ever afters. And this is an outstanding story that had me by the throat from beginning to end. I'm going to read you a quote to end this. Uh, the storybook mother goes on a quest to find Harridan Sack's hut. She crosses rivers and braves dark forests to rescue her children. But I am trembling in a police station while the detective nicely encourages me to admit maybe I murdered my preteen. Life is tough when a spouse is deployed, and I'm new to the area, aren't I? The neighbor said she heard yelling sometimes. Did my daughter and I fight a lot? Anyway, that's an excerpt, and all I can say is just check this story out at Pseudopod. My next story pick is Hold On Tight to Me by Joy Guo in Smoke Long Quarterly. This is a heartbreaking, yet also life-affirming story about aging and dementia and about seeing our parents as whole people, not just parents, but people who have a backstory, memories, dreams, shattered and otherwise, that shape them and their lives. Guo's story is gentle but sharp, a beautiful splinter of glass working its way toward the heart. Next up is Jakob Mein Bruder by Philip Wiltgren in Kaleidotrope. I love the dark, ominous, atmospheric vibe of the story, the feeling that resistance is futile and that some things cannot be fixed and mended once they're broken or once someone decides to break them. The beautiful woman at the heart of this tale haunts and taunts the protagonist and lures away Yaakov into a terrible delirium and ultimately possible damnation. There's a strong current of cosmic horror here, and I love how the evil is not pinned down and defined, but remains terrible and menacing right until the end. My next story pick is an Island in His Splendor by Christopher Caldwell in Baffling Magazine. I just love... Okay, so I'm going to read the opening line of the story because I just love it so much. The summer after Octavio Paz died, Eric stood on the rocks below Point Doom, Point Doom and tried to cast his heart into the sea. Ah, I just love that opening, the summer after Octavio Paz died. It grabbed my attention from the get-go, and what follows is a twist on the fairy tale trope of a magical creature that must fulfill the wishes of its rescuer. I love how Caldwell turns things around here, finding hope of a sort, even when the protagonist might not really be looking for hope. And if you want to read some more wonderful fiction by Caldwell, you can check out Canst Thou Draw Out the Leviathan in Uncanny Magazine. Also from Baffling Magazine is The Heart is a Spare Part by Haley Piper. 
And this is a weird Western love story that involves a whole lot of robots and other mechanical beings. Piper's Tale is strange, quirky, twisted, and darkly funny as well. It's definitely not your typical love story, but I adore how the characters try to find new ways, ways of solving their problems other than demolishing each other completely. It's a terrific story, another terrific story from a great issue of Baffling Magazine. Next up is Faithful Delirium by Brent Lambert and Beneath Ceaseless Skies. This is a wonderfully rich and layered tale, and is a story that explores and challenges a lot of the ideas and ideals celebrated by religious zealots and true believers in fantasy and in the real world. The main character is Volgrim, who serves his goddess with absolute conviction, as he has done for a long, long time. He cares for her and tries to follow her wishes, even when her will is somewhat difficult to decipher. War and violence is often the result, and the ending is perfect, with Lambert giving us a twist and then another twist on what happens when true believers almost lose faith. My next story pick is Factory Baby by Frances Ogamba in Yaba Left Review. And I'm going to read a quote from the story. I look at the child quite big for a three-month-old, and see the thing that has engulfed him. It moves fast, receding and reappearing in his face. The skin of his hands grows transparent, and something scaly shimmers and then vanishes. Now, this story, this story I love this story. It's when an, it's a neighbor brings home a new baby that will not stop screaming, and the narrator soon realizes that something is not quite right, as you can hear by that quote I read. The mother is exhausted. The screaming won't stop for weeks. But when it finally does stop, things get better. Or do they? This is a chilling story that tightens like a vice. My next story pick is... Gordon B. White is Creating Haunting Weird Horror by Gordon B. White, published in Nightmare. This is a darkly funny and also legitimately terrifying short story by White um, that sort of takes off on the whole Patreon phenomenon. And it's about what happens if you support the fictional, presumably, maybe, Gordon B. White on Patreon. The narrator of the story, or the main character, um, signs up for postcards to arrive. And once the postcards start arriving, the Patreon supporter has misgivings about the Enterprise, but as it turns out, it's not so easy to escape the grasp of this particular author. This story is clever, scary as hell, and it has a sense of humor sharp enough to cut. It's a must read. My next story pick for July is He Leaps for the Stars, He Leaps for the Stars by Grace Chan in Clark's World. And oh my goodness, this is such a fantastic story. It's science fiction with a tender, gentle heart and spirit. It's bittersweet and lovely through and through. It's about pop idol Yenny, who lives in a seemingly blessed yet somewhat hollow life and is worshipped and followed with intense interest by his many fans across the solar system. Beneath the surface he shows the world, he is looking for a kind of freedom that he has never experienced. To quote Chan herself, this story has a lonely pop idol on Enceladus, super fans, quantum entanglements, tender queer feelings, duplication and duplicity. So there's also a caring android and pro so gorgeous it made me slow down and reread several passages just to savor the beauty of it all. Highly recommend it. Next up is a list of historical places frequented by a boy and his dog by Eleanor Arwood in Seuss and well, if you would like your heart broken by the thoughts of a very good dog, then this wonderful and quietly shattering story is for you. A dog remembers, and each memory is filled with both longing and love. 
My next story is also from Suescape, and it is called Him Without Her and Her Within Him. It's by Amy Ogden, like I said, again from Suescape. It's a tender, aching story about adolescence, grief, and death. Ogden tells the tale of a son who is losing his mother and who feels the world and life slipping away from him. When he shapeshifts into a bird, he is able to find some relief, but it's not enough to heal the hurt he's feeling. Ogden skillfully captures how difficult it can be to communicate our true feelings to others, even those we love, and how the world can shatter us even when we decide to go on living. Beautiful and heartbreaking story. Now my next story pick for July is Data Migration by Melanie Harding Shaw in Strange Horizons. This is a beautifully crafted story about, soci about a society caught up in and trying to deal with the severe repercussions of climate change. Trying to make people live in a way, a society that is trying to make people live in a way that will make it possible to survive. I love how the story describes this future society through a series of assignments, tasks, and lessons for kids. And as written by a teacher who is replying to uh, their students. We glimpse the harsh and sharp edges of this society through someone who is trying to soften the world to make it easier to bear for the kids that have no other choice but to live through it. Next up is A Softness of the Heart by Lulu Kadim in Fantasy Magazine. This is a ghost story with a gentle and very imaginative heart. Louise is dealing with the ghosts gathering around her after her aunt dies. The ghosts used to be drawn to her aunt, but now it seems Louise attracts them too. These ghosts aren't all bad, even if they might be restless and somewhat demanding. This is both lovely and hopeful. Next up is Shuck by G. V. Anderson in The Deadlands. And oh, what a gor gorgeously wrought, raw, and utterly devastating story this is. It's about Bridget, who can't quite let go of the memories of Samantha, her friend or frenemy, and the memories of the night Samantha died. Bridget's life still spins tightly around this death, and she can't quite seem to break free of the influence Samantha had on her in life. A fraught, painful, and complicated legacy that seems to be seeping through her and seeping into her life like a slow-moving nightmare. And then there's the dog, Shuck, the one with the red glowing eyes haunting her steps, the same dog she saw right before Samantha's life ended. And the ending of the story carries a fierce, profound sadness. And it's another terrific story from The Deadlands. Next up is Kudzu by Elizabeth Kestrel Rogers in Diabolical Plots. I'm going to read a quote from the story to start. For Karis, the mech did all her body had been, still was, still would be. Ravaged by cystic fibrosis. It wasn't so bad that she needed a transplant, but she'd been on disability for some time, each paycheck slim, each breath feeling numbered and tighter than the last. So this is a science fiction story about Karis, who earns a living by working a mech, joining her own body and mind to the machine, and heading out in the ravaged world in order to clear it, clean it, maybe even make it better. There's a joyfulness and brightness beneath the surface of the story, beneath the tale of a world changed and almost destroyed. And I love how the story embraces that joy in the end without making, without turning sappy or glossy. My next story pick is Across the River, My Heart, My Memory by Anne LeBlanc in Fireside. And it starts out like this. I have to read this. I am Michelle's artificial pancreas, stolen cleanly and carefully from her gut. The surgeons are quick. Before I can finish my hard reset, they place me inside you. I don't even have time to say goodbye to Michelle's other organs. And so this is 
such a uniquely imagined sci-fi story, I absolutely adore it. The narrator, or point of view character, is, yes, a pancreas. An ornery and rebellious pancreas that still carries all the memories of the woman it once belonged to. In fact, many of the organs in this story are repositories of memory, of the life experience of individuals meant to join their voices and their experience inside whoever accepts them. And when these organs, who are indeed sentient, are stolen and put into a new person, well, that can lead to some very interesting complications. Next up is two stories from Apex. Uh, the first one is What Sisters Take by Kelly Sandoval. And this is, oh, this is a chilling, chilling monster story, really. It's about three sets of twin sisters who grow up in the same neighborhood. And in each case, one of the twin sisters is born a monster, though they appear human. And they are slowly, imperceptibly, devouring their sibling. This is horror, but it's also something deeper. It's a heartbreaking and deeply unsettling story about childhood the relationship between siblings and about identity. There is a dark magic swirling at the heart of this tale, and I love how Sandoval shows that there is a choice to be made here, even for the monsters or the monstrous part in all of us, and that we can save ourselves and others, even when it is frighteningly difficult. The next story from Apex is Without Wishes to Bind You by E. Catherine Tobler. Now, this is a leprechaun story, but a science fiction leprechaun story. It's set in a world ravaged by climate change. And yeah, it's awesome. Michael is trying to find his way back to Heather. Heather, who told him all about how to catch a leprechaun. Except that Michael caught Pudgy the leprechaun a different way altogether than what Heather taught him. This story is aching and tender, even as Pudgy and Michael traverse a terrible landscape, even as Michael holds back his wishes, and even as Pudgy clings to Michael, trapped by the magic that binds them. The story shifts between Pudgy and Michael's trek and letters from Heather to Michael. And once the mystery of those letters is revealed, we understand that there is a bond of a different kind between man and Leprechaun, a strikingly original, uniquely imagined, and emotionally powerful blend of sci-fi and leprechaun fantasy. Highly recommend you read this one. Next up is Divine in the House of Hunger by Dare Sigun Falowo in the Dark. This is a devastating horror story that is firmly anchored in the horrors, cruelty, and injustice of the real world, describing reality with razor sharp clarity before revealing an even deeper rot and evil beneath. There's a sense of dread an inescapable destruction lurking here as we follow Divine into a new household in Lagos. Divine has worked her fingers to the bone for years, offering her services as an impeccable housekeeper in many homes, hoping to earn enough money to do something better with her life. And then she meets Mrs. Arawolo. This is masterful horror. Next up is another story from The Dark. The Spelunker's Guide to Unreal Architecture by L. Chan. This is a bone-chilling and twisted, twisty read by Chan, uh, about two friends who have spent years finding and exploring buildings that aren't quite what they seem, and that might not quite be part of our world. These two friends also share a backstory and a traumatic loss that has scarred them both. And now, in the latest house they enter, that past comes back to haunt them quite literally. Chan builds the suspense and horror expertly, and there's a real depth of friendship and grief and guilt running through the story that gives it an emotional heft and makes it linger long after reading. Next up is The Soul Catcher by Layla Martin in Cosmas Infinities. And oh, what a gloriously dark and ominous tale this is. It's written as a series of journal entries by The Soul Catcher, and as the story unfurls, we soon realize that the true task and purpose and the true nature of the soul catcher's work is not quite what the journal writer slash soul catcher believes. And when the truth starts to reveal itself, everything unravels, or so we think. 
The solitude and quiet dedication and desperation of the narrator in the story reminded me of Susanna Clarke's novel Piranesi, and I mean that is very high praise. Next up is Black Leg by Glenn Hirschberg, Hirschberg at Tor.com. The intro blurb for the story says, Haunted by stories he hears while on jury duty, a documentary filmmaker finds himself in an abandoned mall at the dead of night. That is the bare bones of the story. Beneath the surface, Hirschberg peels back the skin of the everyday world and the veneer of what we might think is reality. And there lurks a terrifying darkness that gathers you in close. I love how the story gives you that sense of vertigo, as if you're falling into an abyss you didn't even know was there, right in front of you. Next up is A Smell of Jet Fuel by Andrew Dana Hudson in Lightspeed. I'll read a quote from the beginning of the story. We met on the 107th floor of the South Tower. She was standing in quiet contemplation, watching fire spread through the building across the plaza, smoke and paper billowing out into that baby blue sky. She wasn't supposed to be here. Yes, this story involves time travel uh, as a tourism thing. And you can visit an old catastrophe and see it up close. In this particular story, we find ourselves in a group of tourists being shepherded through the terror of 9-11, seeing it all play out in the South Tower. The tour guide is our narrator, and we soon realize that not everything will go according to plan on this trip. As Hudson tells us in Lightspeed's author spotlight, this story is a riff on and an homage to Ray Bradbury's The Sound of Thunder. And as a fan of Bradbury, I have to say that this is a terrific read. The ending got me good, and reminds the reader that you really should be careful what you wish for. Next up, my last pick for this month is Shandy by Gabrielle M. M. Harry in Omenana. And I'll read a quote from this story. The thing about family is that sometimes when you hold them close, you must hold their grudges too. It's a darkly funny story about Ebi who uses a bottle of La Casera to summon one of her ancestors to help her with an exam and ends up getting way more help than she bargained for. I love how the story takes the idea of ancestors coming to help and guide the living and then twists it into something quite unexpected, as when Evie's great-grandmother runs into a great-great-grandmother uh, and the sparks fly putting E.B.'s future in question. A terrific read. And that was all my picks for this month and all the stories. The text version is available at my uh, book blog, Maria's Reading. Thanks so much for listening and I will see you next month. Thanks so much.